There's always opportunity if we ask ourselves the right question. If we focus on the time that I don't have or the ability that I don't have or the capital that I don't have, we're going to limit ourselves right out of the gate. Hello, everyone. I am so excited because we have a very fantastic guest today, Brett Riggins. And you guys know, like mainly we usually have physicians on our show. So when I bring someone else that's outside of that realm, it must be really special. So I'm just going to give you a moment to tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. And I do feel special. So um, I'm oftentimes I'm in the uh, circles uh, with physicians and um, practitioners, and I am not a physician. So much gratitude. Thank you so much. How? How did I come about this? How did I get into this circle not being a physician? I kind of joke around sometimes and say, well, I went to school long enough to be a physician. I see the guitar hanging on my back wall here for the listeners uh, not seeing the video, but I started in construction. Um, My background is architectural engineering, construction management engineering, and I went and did everything uh, from the, the pipes under the concrete to the shingles on top of the roof. I've done everything with my hands and I, in my direction of design, design build, I never wanted to just draw pictures and say, hey, this works, go do it. I know that it works. I wanted to take a path of implementing those designs and implementing those procedures and learning everything I could with my own hands. That way, when I I gave directions or set paths or did renovations, I understood those things. In that journey, I... Uh, stumbled onto real estate. I bought my first house, boy, it's probably, it's getting close to 20 years ago, Urquita. And it was right around the time of the 07 um, instance uh, and learned so much through that. And I did everything again, learning with my own hands, the blood, sweat, and tears, the sweat equity piece. Um, I met my wife right around that time and we became an inseparable pair in the world of real estate. And if any of the listeners out there have a significant other and have gone through a renovation or an investment or any kind of uh, challenge like that, it really, it will pull you together or push you apart. So that was a great path. And then since then, we've been nothing but our real estate and yeah, building our portfolio, helping others build their portfolio. And the biggest piece to this I'm excited to talk about today with your listeners is the mindset piece that has to happen before everything else. I love that. And I love how you explain your journey because I think, of course, everything is translatable in life. So everyone thinks that there is a straight and narrow path to medicine and there's not like there will be stumbles, there will be lessons you may change your entire career trajectory, kind of like you did. For me, I thought that I was going to do underserved primary care for the rest of my life and work and be a a hometown doctor. Um, And now I'm working in health tech and doing the show and so many other things. So I love that you you talked about how you started and how you kind of evolved in your journey. I would love for us to dive so deeply into mindset But before we do that, you did mention real estate. So can you tell us a little bit about your work with Real Estate Mogul MD? Yeah, absolutely. So Real Estate Mogul MD is a a blessing, an opportunity to share uh, not only my path, my experience, but with so many guests. It's a podcast. Um, A lot of physicians come on, but a lot of investors come on too, a lot of coaches uh, we actually have CPAs come on. So the the full journey around real estate, but that's all backed by our companies. And my wife and I have built a, a few companies and Physician Wealth Systems is one where we work directly with physicians acquiring and building their real estate portfolio. And the biggest thing about this company is it's creating a turnkey investment business, not just offering turnkey investments. So a big difference when we talk about mindset, it's the ability to be a business owner and not get stuck in the ditches, right? Not get stuck in basically buying yourself another job. That company, we do 12 properties in 12 months for our clients. Yeah, so this is single family and this is setting that setting that business up 
leveraging our power team, our processes, our systems, integrating our automations, uh, utilizing our VAs. It's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. I absolutely love it. But what fuels that, Urquita, is our nationwide real estate acquisition company called uh, Connect Home Buyers. Mm -hmm. And that's really where I've, I've cut my teeth, I guess is the word to say it. We've done everything, you know, fix and flip. At one time, we were doing six fix and flips at a time. Uh, and I found this new world of flip, um, not flipping houses, but flipping paper in the world of assignment and wholesale real estate. So we've done that from the shores, you know, the tip top of Washington up towards Canada, all the way on the sh to the shores of New Jersey, you know, selling houses on the ocean. So I'm licensed in a couple of states. My wife is licensed in one. And I'm just really excited about now how we're plugging plugging into the MLS, aggregating data, using tech mm -hmm. to just take this edge, you know, take control of this edge and create these opportunities for everybody. I love learning about this because I think a lot of students may be kind of in their bubble right now of just trying to figure out what's next for them, how to get into medical school, how to get into residency. And then you have these other factors that come about in terms of having a large loan burden or trying to figure out where to move. Should they rent or should they buy when they get into a certain location where they may be there for a limited time? So why do you feel as though it's important to learn about real estate in this early stage of their careers? Yeah, great question. I love it. And I'm just like, just let me answer. Let me answer before you even ask that. Because throughout all of that, and we talked about everybody's going to have a different journey. Everybody's got a different path, whether it's the one you think you're on or the one you end up. The thing that holds us all together is life. So throughout this, we're all going to have a different stack of experiences, different stack of opportunities. But if we tune in earlier to the mindset required, to not only to build wealth, but what will make us happy and keep us happy. I talk about this a lot about the buckets, learning to fill these buckets. We start having these conversations and turning our perspective so that we're, we understand where we're at now. Because let me tell you, everybody out there, I've not gone through medical school. I've gone through school, but as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, I've had tests and trials. And I can tell you of countless days where I have no sleep, have my head banging against my desk. I've been there. I know what that feels like. So understanding that we can create systems and processes and hold these goals that don't require us to create the machines that will eat us, that will kill us. So the sooner that we can turn this on, have these conversations and learn that it's, it's who we have around us that helps us grow to where we want to go, because it's not the goal, it's the journey. And in this process, like you say, we start talking about this. I always say this a lot, the, the reticular activating system, right? This, I think it's the RAS. It's the, what I call the red car syndrome. You know, I say, oh, I only want to get this red car. And then I see nobody has this car. And then as soon as I start driving this car, I start seeing it everywhere. Well, the same way I think that we can take and implement a learning this mindset shift, removing our limitations, because no matter where you're at, this whole journey of life is going to present us with opportunities. But the success happens when the preparedness meets those opportunities. So the sooner that we learn, the sooner that we start talking about this, listening to amazing podcasts, like the Perspective Doctor, like this podcast, so many more bigger pockets, the White Coat Investor, all of these ones, start learning about this earlier, then you, you're going to be able to start picking this out just like that red car. I love that you mentioned that because, yeah, there are so many opportunities and there are so many ways to set yourself up for success and for different things that may arise. I know that there is especially when the pandemic started and wherever we are now, there have been a lot of people who've reflected on their life and realized that they want something different or they want to cut back in time or they may feel burnt out in different things and, and having different systems in place in different pockets and different buckets allows for that freedom. And I love what you were saying about preparation and, and the mindset, because like you were saying there, there's a wonderful quote that like chance favors a prepared mind. So learning about all of these different things and figuring out things. So when those opportunities arise, you already kind of know about it and you're like, OK, I'm educated. I can take that leap or OK, maybe I want to learn more or I'm in that space where I can expand. So I love for us to kind of chat about like how important it is to have a great mindset in terms of those things. 
Yes. Expanding association is going to be huge. Don't get stuck in the circles right now. I can only imagine, but this, this whole selection process of, uh, you know, the residency process, I want to talk a little bit on the outside of that beyond the medical piece and being able to expand your associations outside of medicine. And I guess the perspective of life in general, because we know that through this process, you're going to go through no money. You're going to be working basically for free, being expected to do everything. And then all of a sudden, well, not before even that, you've built up so much debt. So this is something that all physicians go through. You're little to no income. You've got these massive, massive amounts of debt, 200, 300, even more sometimes. And now we go into a place where we become high earners. And now what? Now this thing of, okay, uh, lifestyle creep. Lifestyle creep. So now I'm making this money. I'm going to start spending more, but I still have got all this debt. So these are the struggles that the earlier that we can see these and start talking about them and understanding that there's ways out, especially if we're talking about them before. Because even though once we start making money, start paying down this debt, taxes. I talk about filling our bucket. I've got income bucket. These biggest holes in our bucket uh, is going to be taxes and interest. Mm -hmm. How can we minimize these? How can we maximize our income and minimize our expenses? It's having conversations like this in that mindset piece of understanding. Although we all have our own journey, the struggles that we have along the way when it comes to money, finances, and wealth building it's, it's time and time again, everybody's going to go through them. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And that brings me up to a particular memory of something that I recently came into play with. Now we have to start discussing these things and not keeping them secret because a lot of times money is like that taboo topic you don't talk about. You don't want to know what someone else is making or they don't share it or you don't want to ask them how they went about particular things. And sometimes, especially for the pre-meds who are looking out there who are making tremendously large decisions in terms of what school they're going to go to, what city they're going to live in, those things are important. I recently went back to mentor some students and I was having conversations with them about how medical school is going and things like that. And they live in a, a fairly high cost of living area. So when I was talking to them, the biggest things that they were worried about was how do they navigate their finances? Some of them are going through food insecurity where they are eating oodles and noodles every day and, and you can't really function on that in the way a medical school of studying and things like that. They're getting food stamps and they're trying to figure out how to navigate these loans and no one has necessarily talked to them about that. And then on top of that, there are some student housing places available, but not for everyone. So so kind of figuring out how to plan for those. You may find a fantastic school, but if you don't plan financially how to map out each semester, you may find yourself in a bind. Or even if you do, figuring out how to navigate things like once you leave residency in terms of how to work on paying your loans back or how to work on kind of setting up these buckets, like you said, when you get kind of in that next step phase, because of course, there will be struggles for everyone in different capacities. So some people may be fine there or some people. And then when they get to their residency salary, they're like, oh, what is this? How do I live? How do I navigate it? Or how do I live? Yeah, because it's very shocking because you're, you're yeah. kind of working 24 hours and not making that kind of salary. So how do you navigate those things and plan so that you can have these opportunities come up and, and kind of jump on them so that you can have a life where you have the opportunity to have decisions that are in your favor. Yeah, I can tell you uh, the first things that pop into my mind, Arkita, are um, when I started doing this, I didn't have any money. I didn't have mm -hmm. any credit. Uh, there was even times, um, you know, playing the guitar where I was sleeping on other people's couches. You know, that's that's just where I was at that. But that didn't limit me from the opportunity that I had. And when I say that is, it's limiting beliefs that hold us back. So no matter where we're at in this journey, even in school, into residency, uh, fellowship, whatever path that, that you take, there's going to be opportunities. And the only time that you're not going to be able to see or take advantage of those opportunities is when you limit yourself. And instantly, as soon as you say, I can't, 
your brain will stop. Mm -hmm. And if we change that I can't to how can I, then we're going to start figuring out these ways because if you find the right situation, so say even in med school, we're struggling with what we're eating, all these different pills. Does that mean I can't take advantage of an opportunity if it did come across? Because the first thing I think about is house hacking. And now I'm thinking, okay, now there has to be a point where I, I don't have time for another job. I don't know how to fix toilets or, you know, a leaky sink. I don't know all of that, or I don't have time to go out and find the deal. But if we focus on the things that we don't have or the things that we can't do, we'll never find that way for it to work. So again, back to this mindset piece, there's something called house hacking where, okay, maybe there is an opportunity. If I am paying rent and I'm depending on where you're at, I mean, that rent could be a thousand, it could be 2000, you know, I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but just think about the opportunity of maybe even like a seller finance deal where it's, you know, where instead of paying a thousand dollars in rent, I could almost be paying a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars in mortgage, mm -hmm. uh, setting it up in a seller finance scenario where it creates now an opportunity so I could start doing that faster. Or if you're in the position to rent, you can even do the rent arbitrage stuff. So uh, rent out other rooms as well, too. So there's there's always opportunity if we ask ourselves the right question. We have to align those opportunities with our time and I don't even want to say our ability. Actually, we just need to align them with the right questions. Because if, like I say, if we focus on the time that I don't have or the ability that I don't have or the capital that I don't have, we're going to limit ourselves right out of the gate. Yes. Change the I can't to how can I. I love that. And that, that can be applied into so many different realms of life in general for yeah. those who are listening who may have not gotten many interviews or may have not been accepted into medical school at the same time is not the I can't you're not going to just stop trying so you're going to look at your application you're going to talk to other people you're going to talk to the people who interviewed you talk to your friends who have gotten in and figure out a method of how you can get in for those who are in medical school or even in pre-med who may have not done so well in a test, you're not just gonna say, oh my goodness, I can't pass organic chemistry or I can't pass anatomy or, or whatever it is, or, or your boards, you're gonna say, okay, how can I get to this thing and what changes do I have to do? What resources do I have to look up and pull from? So, yeah. so that is really applicable. You said chemistry and you just sent like shivers down. <laughs> Oh, the memories of chemistry. That was one I took a couple times for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. In the same way, at, at all the things that I say, I, I don't, I didn't make this stuff up and I, I, you know, I'm not the creator of, of these paths or these procedures. Some of the technologies that we implement and some of those things that we combine along the way, I could gladly raise my hand and say, Hey, that's, that's mine. But so many of these other things are key. It's like, I'm not the one that's presenting this, like, you know, the, the idea of, you know, I can't, how can I, and in that path was that that's, I've learned that from other people's experiences, but the difference of learning something and then turning that knowledge into wisdom is implementing it. Right. So implementing that to how can I, and it's, it made me think of two, I were talking about that in the world of real estate, how can I, how can I, how can I? So even where you're at, if you are working maybe part-time jobs or whatever, why not start looking then in real estate pieces if possible? Because then that's gonna start throwing these little things in there where you're able to grow from it and gain those opportunities because then expanding your association, being around the people who are already doing what you wanna do creates a different trajectory for you. Absolutely, like I love how you're, continuing to reiterate about expanding your circle because I know the listeners are probably sick of me talking about this, but I love to call it your personal board of directors. So yep. you're not going to only talk to people who know about medicine or who are in your field or who are like you. You have a personal board of directors. It can be not definitely not official, but it could be your friend who's doing real estate or your acquaintance that you met at a conference who has some really good ideas or your mom or your cousin talking about life issues. And you don't go to everybody for everything, but there are these little pockets of specialties or these little pockets of expertise where you're learning from people and you're contributing and they're rooting for you because they want you to win. So they're, they're all on your team. 
So it's kind of expanding that team so that it can open your eyes and open your life up to different opportunities and lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. For some reason, it made me think of the book Richest Man in Babylon. It's a really quick read, but whenever we talk about taking advice or you know expanding our association, it makes me think of that book and uh, the instance where the the wealthy gentleman gave his son his a piece of his inheritance says, Hey, you take this much, come back with it in five or 10 years or whatever it is. But the people that he leaned on for their advice was just the wrong people. So a great little short read on that. But absolutely, I agree and echo this all the time that we are what was the four or five, you know, people that we spend the most time with, we are an average of those people. Absolutely. So I love all of the words of wisdom that you shared with us. And I love, as we're starting to come to a close, to ask all of my guests this, because all of us will be touched by healthcare in some form or fashion, whether or not it's for ourselves or our family members and loved ones. So we all know that our healthcare system isn't perfect. I wish it was. But if you had a magic wand and you could change anything about the healthcare system, what would it be? That's a great question. I, in my journey, I guess being a little different coming, and it's not necessarily related to politics, but in my life, I can see as a musician, I was probably leaning more towards the the blue color politics. Mm -hmm. And now uh, as established uh, investor, family, you know, all of this stuff. I probably leave more towards the red side, more conservative piece. But in that path, why I mentioned that is as a musician, I, I didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. And it, what I felt like the first time that I went to a clinic and they helped me for free, it was like, oh my goodness, that was like, it would bring tears to my eyes. And it was like, oh my goodness, this is so amazing. And then now as, you know, I say what well, I, I I'm definitely in a better spot now paying for something. And it's just a struggle for me because I find myself not going in because I'm more conservative and more thoughtful of, of my money. But now it's, it's like the idea, the first thing that jumped into my mind was just healthcare for, for everybody, making it attainable. The insurance, oh my goodness, the insurance world. And I get to speak of this from both sides to speaking with physicians, learning the difficulties, the intricacies, all the complications revolved around that. Insurance, I think, is one of the biggest problems out there. So uh, one of the struggles maybe with free healthcare would be, you know, it would require too much time from uh, people who don't necessarily need the attention, to, but they're not, there's no, what they say, skin in the game with my air quotes. Uh, when you do go in and seek advice, that would be one of the challenges, but it just comes back down to the insurance piece. The insurance piece is so big. There's so much money there. There's so much force. It makes it extremely difficult. And it's almost like they have absolute control over the process. I was recently in a, a car accident. It's been, I don't know, probably about three months ago and the car is completely totaled. I'm so blessed. Mm -hmm. And people ask me all the time, why do you work with physicians? Well, this is definitely one of those instances where we were helped so much. My family, all three of my daughter, my son, my wife, they were at three different ambulances. They were taken off, strapped in, like it was intense. Mm -hmm. And we were taken care of by physicians and first responders. So absolute blessing. Thank everybody for the, what you do in school, in residency, fellowship, your whole entire journey, what you take from your family, sacrifice from your family to give to other families. Much gratitude because it's those moments that I get to say, say thank you for. But in those particular moments, the whole process behind that after it's done, the whole billing, I, as an investor, very focused on and, and a business owner paying bills and when there's insurance involved now i'm not supposed to be paying these bills but the insurance company's not billing it you know not taking care of it so now i'm getting letters from from a, a care provider saying that they're going into collections that whole piece has been extremely extremely frustrating and difficult 
I pay my bills. I would happily pay all of that. But since I have insurance mm -hmm. that I'm required by law to have, I can't, I don't pay it or else they won't pay. It's an absolute mess. I think that's one of the, the downfalls of our system right now is insurance. I definitely agree with that. We definitely have a way to go with restructuring the healthcare system and figuring out a happy balance, like you said, for those who are underserved and, and don't necessarily have the resources to get health care because, of course, that increases the cost when they come in there later in the progression of their disease or what's going on, as well as, of course, wanting to help everyone get the care that they deserve. But then on the other realm of it, just navigating the health care system, navigating the insurance system and all of the barriers that they put up. Number one is difficult on the patient side because, like you said, you you don't want to go to collections for something, but you also want to utilize the insurance that you've been paying for, especially if it's something that they will cover. And then on, on top of that, you're adding all the other stresses. And from the physician standpoint of having to go to the insurances and try to get things approved, and there's something for the students who are listening who aren't at this point called prior authorizations where you may write a prescription or order a specific test or some imaging for a person and you know they need it and they come back and they're like well are you sure you need it can you write a letter that they need and i'm like didn't you see my note and i ordered it i mean am i supposed to go back and say yeah they need it because i said i need it <laughs> so it just takes up like so much of your day yeah. so if there was a way where we could kind of navigate outside of the insurance and, and and work on the business of medicine that's very important for you guys to learn about and there are other types of business structures for physicians that are coming up in terms of direct primary care and things like that, or physician owned hospitals. So it is definitely something to look into because insurance is definitely ingrained in the system and it can cause some headaches. <laughs> yeah, so big, it's so big. And even talking about that in the education piece too, I talk a lot with physicians about the education piece and the finance piece that's missed through med school, the business piece that's missed through med school. And just because of the macro, the, the big, the bigness <laughs> of this, of both education and insurance, it's so hard to make that change. But if we don't try, if we don't make moves, we don't have these conversations, then it will never happen. The last thing I wanted to add on that last thing, uh, last note, Urquita, was proactive versus reactive. And I know that we struggle a lot with this, and that's almost a side effect of the insurance because you could probably echo that proactive things are not necessarily covered by insurance as opposed to reactive things. And sometimes as a physician, as a person, I, I want to correct those things first, the, the proactive piece. And that's so hard to get into the systems now, right? Instead of addressing the symptom, I need to address the problem itself. And that most of the time can be proactive as opposed to reactive not covered by insurance. Absolutely. So we're, we're seeing things in terms of prevention is key. And especially as a primary care doctor, it's so important for prevention. There are some ways moving in value-based care and things that people, we may have another episode on that guys, but uh, look into those things and, and see how you can even advocate for us to work to, to change the system because you guys are the future. Yep. Yep. And the last note would be be proactive and not reactive when it comes to your finances. And it starts with your mindset. Absolutely. So you've shared so many pearls of wisdom with us, and I definitely appreciate you for joining us. I just want to give you an opportunity to let us know if there's anything coming up in the pipeline and how listeners can reach out to you. Yeah. Great question. I appreciate that. Um, the biggest piece that I love, it was a Zig Ziglar line. It says, uh, stop selling and start helping. I am so fortunate and blessed to be in that position in my life. And whatever I can do to connect with anybody out there to help, whether it's mindset, whether it's take a direction, or even connecting you with other people, uh, it's a blessing of mine to do that. So if anybody wants to go to physicianwealthsystems.com, and there's so many resources on there from different podcasts, uh, websites, other physicians, you know, showing physicians how to start businesses. I wrote a book called How to Get Rich as a Doctor. That, that resource is on there as well, too. 
So check that out. In the beginning, the entire beginning of that book is all about mindset. Uh, the last thing on there, Akita, is something called real estate residency. And if anybody's in residency now, this is the beginning piece of real estate itself. The who, how, where, when, what, and why, and guess what? It's free. So physicianwellsystems.com, check it out. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will definitely put the link to that in the show notes. And for all of the listeners out there, I appreciate you. If you made it this far, click subscribe. We're now on YouTube. So if you want to watch us and like our facial expressions, you can go on there. Otherwise, we're wherever podcasts are found. I think that this is an episode where you should share the wealth. So share with all your friends. I think that this is something that everyone needs to talk about mindset, how to set yourself up for success and how to thrive and how to bring your community together to support one another. So if there are any other topics that you want to listen up to or you want me to reach out to anyone, definitely reach out on my Instagram at Dr. D Ground, D-O-C-T-O-R, the letter D, G-R-A-M, Dr. D Graham, or reach out to us on Med School Coach and we'll get back to you. See you again next week with another fantastic guest. Bye. Each episode of the Prospective Doctor podcast is brought to you by Med School Coach. To access articles, videos, webinars, and free tools to help you succeed on your journey toward medical school and beyond, visit our website, prospectivedoctor.com. We hope you tune in again next time.